All right, all right, all right. Game one, Western Conference Finals. Edmonton, Colorado. The theme for this series is going to be what is goaltending. If, if you are one of those people that likes to go to Vegas and place money on the games and statistics, take the over. Every game is liable to be 5-4 to four at best. My score for tonight, 7-6 Edmonton in overtime. I think Edmonton's going to win this series. I don't trust Colorado. Don't trust Kempfer. The stars all the way around here. I mean, every team's got just you got McKinnon and McDavid and Dreisaitl and Landeskog and Kane. And it's just on and on and on and on and on. It's just way too much offense for these defenses and these goaltenders to handle. Defenses and goaltenders to handle. I, I'm already excited. I just, I just know where it's going to just be goals every two minutes. It's just going to be a goal or a mixed goal or a hit post. Shorthanded goals. I'm calling shorthanded goals in this series, too, as well. But I like Edmonton. Edmonton making the finals would be a lot of fun. So, all right. I'm ready. You guys ready? Just finished the live stream. Doing the live streams before every game the rest of the year. One hour before the game and do a live stream. And then if you want to watch the in-game commentary, uh, head over to Twisted Wrist. Twisted Wrister Hockey. My friend Nick, we just did an Eastern Conference preview today. He does the in-game commentary. He's really, really good. So go ahead and head over there. Meanwhile, Edmonton, Colorado. Let's get 15 tonight. Well, <laughs> so I said 7-6 in overtime, which means they're actually going to have to score less goals than they're on pace to score now to get to the 6-6 tie to have 7-6 be the overtime score. So, I mean, I've lost count. McKinnon, Kane, Comfer, then McCarr. I forget the other. <laughs> McCarr with the one at the end here, right? Um, Just, just, <sighs> I thought it was offsides. You're looking at it and you're seeing white in between the skate and the line and white in between the puck and the line. And you're thinking, okay, this is offsides and it's going to come back. And I always find it interesting how the the announcers and, and the referee guy, you know, the, the rules guy that they will have, will explain how they think why the call is going to be one thing. And then when it turns out to be the opposite call, the, the rules guy will come back and say, well, actually, this is why it's, it's not offsides or it is offsides. It's like, shouldn't you have known that in the beginning? You're the rules guy. You got one job. Can't get it right. So apparently the way they explained it, I think, is that because the guy wasn't touching the puck when he brought it over, the puck just kind of went in um, before the other players. I forget the players who, 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 who did. Obviously, McCarr was coming in with the puck. I forget the player that would have been offsides but wasn't, but isn't. But it's, it's, it was a mess. It was a mess, but it's a goal. So it's 3-2, and they scored nine seconds after Edmonton had tied it up. And we're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like this. It's going to be like this all series long. Somebody in one of these games is going to get 10. Hopefully 10 will be enough. Hopefully 10 will be enough. Because right now I said 7-6. They're on pace for 9-6 uh, <laughs> right now. I said get 15. Oh, look at that. Maybe we're going to get 15 tonight. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> and the game's not even done yet. Now I said seven, six. Oilers in overtime, so that's 13 goals. It's seven, four already, Colorado. So there's already 11 goals been scored in this game. Both backups are in. Smith gets pulled, and uh, apparently Kemper gets hurt. Upper body injury, that's something to pay attention to. Now, this guy, Francois, Franchot, nobody, even the guys in the broadcast can't pronounce his name. Both guys are pronouncing it differently. It's fun. But anyway, so this guy comes in, and he's actually made some pretty decent saves. I think he gave up just the one. I believe it was just the one. But the thing of it is, is it came for upper body. So he took some pucks to the face, you know, to the mask. 
So that's something to watch for the rest of the series because you, you don't you can't lose Kemper if you're Colorado. Meanwhile, there's no goaltending. There's no defense being played. I mean, it's a lot of these goals are not really the goaltender's fault. It's it's there's no defense being played. Like if you put if 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 you <laughs> there's no defense being played. It is as opposite as you can get to what the Panthers and Lightning series was. Okay? Whatever if if you if you took that that series and put it into the alternate universe transmogrifier and ask to produce a series that was the exact opposite. This is what you would get. This is beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, they may both get 10. And it might happen tonight. I mean, just take the over, take the over, take the over. All right, all right. What a beautiful game. I really, really wanted overtime. Really, really was hoping that Edmonton would would tie that sucker up at seven with a touchdown apiece. They just couldn't get the puck. They just could not get the puck in the net there towards the end. I'm not a huge fan of pulling the goaltender. I, and I know it works sometimes, but for me personally, when you when they were handling things they have the Avalanche absolutely on their heels, um, five on five. I don't like pulling a goaltender. It, it, it clogs things up a little bit, and the the other teams the other team changes their style. Like Avalanche were on their heels, but then once you pull the goaltender, they start thinking, okay, if we just get the puck once and shoot it down there, we might have a chance to end the game. Pretty much ended up what happened, but anyway, look. I, I still like Edmonton in this series. I think they're going to come back and win game two. Um, I don't. I didn't see anything here tonight that shows me either one of these teams can stop the other one. So I know Colorado has home ice advantage. be interesting to see what happens with Kemper. But um, good series. I just want seven games. I want a good series. I'd like to see Edmonton in. Um, to be honest with you, I think it would be good for the channel, for my person, so it's personal for me. I think it'd be good to be, uh, I'd get more exposure to more Canadian teams. So, but, oh, man, just, you know, when, 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 when they were down 7-3, Stu texted me, he says, that's it. I said, no, they're going to come back. And I thought they were going to pull it off. I thought we were going to get to go to overtime at 7-7, but still, 14 goals, I think they said it's the second most goals in NHL history in the Western Conference Finals. Just beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Wouldn't surprise me to see Game 2 be a little bit tighter defensively. Okay? Um, Kempfer's hurt. You don't know what's going to go there. An interesting decision here. Does, does Edmonton go back to Smith? Koskinen played pretty, pretty well. He played pretty well. He kept them in the game. He made some saves. It'll be interesting to see if they go back to Smith or if they're going to make a change. If you're going to make a change, this this would be the time to do it, right? Smith didn't. It wasn't all his fault. It wasn't all his fault, but he didn't look great either. So, curious what happens there. And um, look, the stars showed up. I mean, just everybody scoring goals. McKinnon, McKinnon almost got another one later on. His speed. McKinnon's speed, when he, he's just special. He just has the ability to get to a different level that I haven't seen. He reminds me of Pavel Bure, to be honest with you. Um, for those of you younger fans, you may not have seen Bure play, but if, if you haven't, look him up on YouTube. He had, he had a burst of speed, same way with McKinnon. He just blows by people. He's an absolutely special player. And uh, it's going to be a good series. I, I still want to see seven, seven games. I still, I'm still calling Edmonton. Edmonton, you know, Edmonton wasn't going to win both games in Colorado. Kind of thought maybe, you know, I was kind of hoping Edmonton would win tonight. But uh, this series is far from over. It's going to be, it's going to be overtime games. But if you're probably going to see closer to five four. I think this might be the highest scoring game. This was a little absurd. This was a little bit ridiculous. The, both of these teams played terrible on defense, absolutely terrible, and which is why I was kind of shocked to see it didn't get tied up. The way it was going, everybody was scoring a goal a minute. 
I was surprised to see Edmonton couldn't put in the back of the net. But uh, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. So Colorado's got the 1-0 one, one lead. And we got hockey again tomorrow. Bro, I love this every day. Hockey. Oh, it's just beautiful. So tomorrow is Tampa Rangers. That's going to be interesting because you got Rangers who have been playing. So they're not rested, but they're sharp. It's at MSG. Got Tampa, who's rested and healthy, but probably will come out a little bit rusty. I think we'll see a big clue to that series early on. If Tampa comes out and shakes off the rust really quick and gets a goal or two and gets a lead, it's not a good sign for the Rangers. On the other hand, if New York wants to win this series, they are going to have to win game one. You do not want to get behind the Lightning in a series because it's just over. It's just over. You get behind in a series to them, you lose game one at home to the Lightning, and you just may as well pack it in. Of course, don't tell that to the Rangers, who came back twice from two. So anything can and will happen. Looking forward to it tomorrow. The live stream is one hour before the game tomorrow. All of these games, the remaining games, the live stream, pregame live stream is one hour before the game. Stu and I will be doing the reviews tomorrow morning. So um, after each playoff game, we, we, we do a review in the morning of the previous night's game, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit of a preview of the next night's game or that night's game. You know what I'm trying to say. It's a review of last night and a preview of tomorrow, but when we do it tomorrow, it'll be today. Does that make sense? All right. About as much sense as Kermit the Frog and the Puppets. I always like it. The new, so the new people watching, I just, I just wonder what your first impression is of, like, What's with what's with the puppets and the panther flag and the whole thing? It's I, I understand it can be very confusing. All I can tell you is hit the subscribe button, take a look around, you won't be disappointed. So all right. Fun game. Fun game, fun game, man. So I, I appreciate all the support. What do you think? We got 14 this game. How about 12 next game? We'll tone it down a little bit. Just 12. We got to have these goals because every every Ranger Tampa game is going to be like 2-1, right? We're all going to be falling asleep on the couch during those games. That's going to be a pain in the ass. You try to recap a 2-1 game, a 1-0 game. Ain't much to talk about. So I appreciate Edmonton and Colorado doing this for me because tomorrow night, about 9 o'clock, we're all going to be on the couch Trying with one eye to keep the damn game on and keep our eyes open because we know how those games are going to go. So, all right. Appreciate all the support. See you again three times tomorrow.